Hey, what's going on, fellas? I uh, just wanted to say thanks for the group. I uh, really appreciate you guys spreading the knowledge. So I'm tired of seeing uh, males getting beta mailed out there. Like It's tough to see after you take the red pill. So, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you. So my question is, you know, I've been going to church my whole life. So uh -huh. I wanted to get you guys' opinion on Christian women. When I was blue-pilled, <laughs> I thought all the girls in church were different. But after taking the red pill, I completely... My eyes were completely open, and I started to realize all the beta bucks in the church and how church women are really no different than any other woman, and they're still hypergamous. And to be honest, most of them are sluts. Like, I find most of the sluts in church. So, well, listen, <laughs> Hold on. Christian girls are different. They're, they are different in that they're, they're, they're slutting for Jesus. They're slutting for Christ, right? Like, that's the... That's what they do it under. Listen, man, church girls, they are the, they're as, as every hypergamous as any other girl out there. They just do it under the guise of something else. Well, they also sell like the lyrics and the notoriety of their idealist uh, storytelling. I mean, I'm just going to say this again. Look, I mean, if you believe that a man in the sky and a talking stake and a dude, you know, part of the seas with two slabs of stone, is, <laughs> you know, like the story that you want to go into. I've got a whole library of Disney movies my daughter's got on DVD I could show you as well. Um, you know, at the end of the day, women are women. There's no good women. There's no bad women. There's just women. So yeah, I got you just got to that. accept that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I got some that here. It, this just came to me, but... I can imagine in 2018, the churches today are attracting a lot of sluts, uh, basically women who want to kind of, well, they hit the wall maybe and start going to church or whatever. So if anything, I think church would probably attract more hyper women of, you know, higher hypergamy, more slut tells and stuff these days. The opposite of what guys were told to think about it. Yeah. yeah. One, of the, um, one of the field reports that keeps coming up on my private men's group is guys will take a screenshot of like a Tinder profile or, or Bumble profile or something like that. And it's a picture of a girl that says, I don't know, something about like, you know, only looking for a good Christian man. But you got a girl here that's a single mother. She's got 72 tattoos all over her body. She's got a low cut top showing off her tits. Like, come on. Like, at what point did you find Jesus? Was it last week because you wanted to find beta bucks? <laughs> well, right. I, what I have I, noticed I, is that a lot of women, uh, the church is kind of interesting because there are two groups that kind of find the church late in life. They're generally guys who get locked up and women who have been sluts for 15, 20 oh. years. They, they overwhelmingly go into church. And the brilliant thing I noticed in one of the churches I went to while growing up was all the women gave off this really pious vibe. And the pastor was really, really vocal about not sleeping around, adultery, etc. And he was the reason I coined what I call the brimstone preacher principle, because this guy, he would stand on the pulpit on Sunday and talk about not uh, cheating, and then he would be fucking half of the uh, married women in the congregation on a rotation. Right. Right. Uh, I, I'm writing the, the fourth book. It's no secret. The fourth book is about the religion, religion and the red pill. And this is part of what I got into. Um, one thing I'm, I'm really kind of getting sick from uh, is listening to more tradcon guys or, you know, quote unquote, neo masculine guys saying, well, you need to go find a traditional quality. Well, you just muted yourself. Sorry. So where do you find that quote unquote quality woman? Well, you've got to go to church or you've got to go find her in a bookstore or you've got to go find her somewhere yeah. where sluts don't go. Right. Which, of course, I guess they're all reading in Barnes and Noble or some shit like that. Um, the, a church is one of those places. I think you need to understand the dynamics of why women go to church in the first place. Um, just as Donovan was saying. Uh, you know, women go to church when they want to get right with God, when they're in their epiphany phase. And they're, I would say, I would argue that the, the women who are in church that you would want to get with in any way either were raised in that church or else they came back to that church after their party years because they now they want to get with the beta bucks guys and now they want to get right with God and now they want to do things the right way. And now, well, you know, I'm gonna I'm looking for a guy who's a good provider and is not like one of these bad boys that that impregnated me and I've got two kids by right now. Uh, I need a guy who's got, you know, who's who's also a strong man of God who's going to uh, take care of me and my kids and, and man up and be a chivalrous, you know, knight in shining armor to come and get me. But he's got to also love Jesus because real men love Jesus. Right. And so that I think that's the appeal for women to go back to church because it's sort of this symbolic, uh, you know, 
thing for them to go back to church to, to prove that, you know, they're, they're getting right. And the other thing is, if you look at Christianity in, in particular, it's based on forgiveness. So when women have become, you know, they've got like two kids and they've got uh, tats and whatever else, and they've lived this party, party girl lifestyle for most of their 20s, they're looking for that forgiveness. They want to be absolved of the indiscretions that they took when they were, you know, when they had a better capacity to explore their hypergamous natures. Well, now they don't. Now I'm 29 and between 29 and 31 years old, I'm about to hit the wall. I, I'm in my epiphany phase and I need the, I need a guy because I'm getting right with God and he's forgiven me and I'm starting all over again. I mean, even to the point where some of these women are saying, yeah, I'm a born again virgin. I mean, that is actually yes. a thing. Listen, and so I, I'm, I'm just telling you like right now, women is just what Rich was saying. Women are women, no matter whether you find them in church or you find them. That's why people really take me to task on this. They say, they say, I'm looking for a quality woman. And, you know, a quality woman is X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, every guy who married, I mean, I, I hate to pick on you, Rich, but I'm sure that your ex-wife, you said, this is a quality woman. And yep. what did you call her after the divorce proceedings were over? Yep. I can't believe that bitch did this to me. And I'll tell you that that's the thing is women are women. They have the same potential to go feral, whether they're a Christian or they're a biker chick from hell. Okay. I mean, it's the same hypergamy is hypergamy, no matter what the dem what demographic you're, you're looking at. Um, and then just to finish off here, uh, this is actually going to be a part of my book and, and, and a book four, um, where I, I go into the aspects of why women get into religion to begin with. All right. So Donovan, you want to wind it down? Yeah, this is real quick. Girls use religion and celibacy or, or I'm a born again virgin. They use this to artificially inflate the cost of their affection. OK, women know they ain't shit, right? Like they know this. So they're out there slutting it up. Guys know they're sluts. Guys know they, you know, she's got tattoos. She's got a baby daddy, this and that and the other. So she thinks to herself, what can I do to separate myself from other women? What can I do? to raise the price? What can I do to make men work harder for me? In other words, what can I do to get more out of men? I'm a born again virgin or yes, I'm, a, you know, I'm in the church. They do this because they think that this makes them a higher quality woman. Oh, you're a Christian. Oh, you must be high quality. So let me treat you with chivalry. Let me shower you with gifts because you're not like the other girls. Oh, you've been celibate for three years. Right. Oh, well, then that must mean that that must mean your vagina is more valuable. Let me let me shower you with gifts and attention because I'm going to treat you just like a virgin. Oh, yes, you, you, you've been celibate for three years. So let me treat you like someone who hasn't had sex in three years. Like th this is what they do. They, they they make these declarations to to artificially inflate the cost of their attention. And, and that image fits in to the beta male blue pill hope for the future. Ooh, okay. There, that, that when, I, when a guy gets to be 29, 28, 29, and this woman shows up and she's, she's got tats. She looks kind of hot, kind of like those girls that he wanted to get with when he was 20, but no, she's like those girls only better because she's a Christian. Right. And now I've been, you know, uh, socking my money away. I've got my degree. I've made partner in the attorneys, I, whatever I, I've, I've done everything by the old set of books and the old rule set. Now here comes this girl. And she says, you know what? Uh, I'm not like those other girls because I'm a Christian. She fits in to that guy's blue pill ideal. And he thinks he, he thinks he's finally hit pay dirt. I've got this one story where just real quick, there's this one guy who was, I think there's this one, was this one woman who was like an ex porn star who found Jesus. And now that's like her shtick. And so she, she's like, now they pastor's wife because uh, <laughs> she's got, that's her story. That's her testimony, right? She's got past all of that. And, and of course, you know, I will tell you no, right I think now. She became a pastor. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe she was a pastor as well. <laughs> she becomes the highest SMV bitch in that church right there. She, she puts every other woman to shame. Doesn't matter what the, you know, you know, what that other chick has been doing for the rest of her life because she used to be a porn star and, and, but she's a porn star for Jesus now and she's okay with it and she's forgiven and she's this ideal, she's this ideal sexuality, but she is also this, you know, she's also this Christian. So she fits into that, that kind of uh, celebrity for those, for these guys. Women know what the blue pill ideal is. That's why they try to put themselves into that box. So there you go. Uh, all you have to do is repent your sins and off you go, bitches. You're all good.